have three important topics about bird photography that I'd like to share with you today. Some of them are frequently asked, some are not, like lighting. Very seldom am I asked, but it's important. Second, camera. We always get questions about which camera to use. Finally, we'll talk about time. And, oh, whoops, i got a bonus topic here. Let's talk about a mystery topic. Make sure you stay to the end so you can catch a mystery topic. All right, let's talk about lighting. So we can't use a flash. We're going to use the largest light we have available, and it's called the sun. Now, you'll find if you start following birds a little bit, they're going to be more active in the early morning and in the late evening, which really works out good for us because that's going to be the best light for the birds, early morning or late evening, right when the sun's coming up or right before the sun goes down. That's called golden hour, right close to that time. That's going to be the best light on the bird. So what you want to do is position yourself such that the light is coming from behind you, the sun, and is shining on the face of the birds. That's going to be your best opportunity to get the best photos of your birds with the best light. The second topic is cameras. I get asked this quite often in my photography club and just from friends, what's the best camera, what's the best lens? That's a tough question. Now, you'll see a lot of my photos and I'll share them towards the end. Uh, and I'll show you what my shutter speed is on all of those and what aperture I use on those and such. But you're gonna find, to get a lot of good close-ups of birds that are moving around fast, you're gonna need some type of camera that has a good zoom. There are some point and shoots that have built-in zooms. Those work pretty good. Uh, but you also have cell phones that also have a zoom capability and your mileage might vary on that. This is gonna be one of those times a, a good DLSR or mirrorless camera is gonna be your friend. The third topic is time. Let's keep this short. Uh, we don't want this video to be long, do we? But let's be honest here, there's no secret. There's no understanding camera technical jargon here. Time is just time. If you don't spend the time in the field to get the photos, then you're not gonna get them. You might get one the first time you go out, and that's gonna be pure luck. Chances are you're gonna go out and you're not gonna get the photos you want. You have to go out time after time after time. It's no secret, no magic. You just gotta keep going. And now for the mystery topic. But before I do that, do me a big favor. Down below there's a, a subscribe and there's a like button. Uh, make sure you hit them both for me, it helps me out. So the mystery topic. The mystery topic is distance. You can solve the distance problem uh, some maybe not so obvious ways, but as soon as I tell you, yeah, that you'll, you'll catch on right away. And that's with the tripod. Use a tripod, set it up near where you think the bird's gonna be. If you've been watching them long enough, you'll get an idea where they are. Uh, maybe you have a bird feeder, you can put a, a tripod near that. But the trick is to get a remote shutter release. You can use your phone on most modern DLSRs and mirrorless cameras. Your cell phones, you can buy a remote release for those as well. They exist, you go to Amazon, I think they're between five and $10, they're not that expensive. Uh, but either way, you set them up on a tripod. Yes, there are mounts for tripods for cell phones. So if you don't have a tripod, you can get one real cheap, or you can just get a mount and you can have some type of uh, clamp that'll hold onto that mount. But anyway, some way to mount that phone so it's stable and you can get some distance. <laughs>